The company is a hive of innovation and creativity, and investors are loving the stock on the vanguard of subscription software with cornerstones of design across the digital world. Can the imagination of Adobe conquer the cloud? Last night, I introduced you to the newest members of the $100 billion club, the companies that have crossed $100 billion in market cap. That includes Adobe, the digital media kingpin that was first of the cloud kings to join this prestigious group. Now, Adobe just reported after the close and it, delivering a 12 cent earnings beat off of a buck 54 basis with higher than expected revenue of 24% year over year. Indeed, it was a great quarter, but remember, as we told you last night, Adobe needed to report a super duper great quarter after the run it's been on. And alas, there were a couple minor niggling issues within the quarter. They experienced cloud annual recurring revenue result that was only in line with expectations and an ever so slight adjusted operating margin miss if you're looking for flaws. So the stock's down, but only to where it was at the end of the month. So let's dig into these numbers with Shantanu New Ryan. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Adobe systems, learn more about his company's prospects. Mr. New Ryan, welcome back to Mad Money. Great to be on the show, Jim. All right, Shantu, tell me, uh, I know that the stock is up 47%. There's going to be some profit taking, whatever, but there is just a tremendous surge in commerce being done over your platform. And I'm trying to figure out where it's all coming from, because a lot of people felt that it had to be tapped out by now. It seems like it's accelerating to me. Well, the entire digital transformation agenda is front and center for every enterprise. And uh, like you said, we believe that every shopping experience needs to be uh, commerce enabled. And so I think whether you're a small and medium business, whether you're travel, whether you're retail, whether you're hospitality, you want to engage with your customers directly online and you want to transact online. And that is a tailwind that's going to continue for many years. Well, let's talk about that because that brings me to the acquisition is what, what most excites me, Magento. When you do one of these acquisitions, I know it's very important. And to me, it gives you the complete suite. Now you're able to uh, do commerce. And also, I think more important, you've, inter you've taught me this, artificial intelligence about what the customer might do. How big is this Magento for you guys? We think it's an incredibly uh, attractive acquisition. And like all of the other acquisitions that we've done, Jim, we think we can significantly accelerate their business. Uh, as we think about engaging with customers, we're the only company uh, that does content. We do content management. We do analytics, uh, to your point, better than anybody else does. And as we look for things that would complement our strategy, Magento is such a unique company in that they do both digital and physical goods. They do B2B as well as B2C. And it really enables us to complete the loop with our customers in terms of being able to deliver the experience online and then to completely transact online. Yeah, you know, there's some people today who are telling me, look, it's now a monopoly with Magento, that there really isn't anybody, any retailer, uh, everybody needs to be on Adobe. Now, I know monopoly is a dangerous word, but uh, at this point, who really is your competition? I can't figure out who it is. Well, Jim, I think we're still focused on two large growing opportunities, uh, empowering people to create. And you think about what's happening with new media types and new devices on which people are creating and consuming content. And we have to keep driving innovation uh, in those uh, areas and then helping businesses transform. There are a number of companies uh, who look at this opportunity every single day, but I think as long as we can continue to innovate at the pace at which we are doing, uh, have our engineers really focus on artificial intelligence and predictive technology, and continue to engage with our customers and deliver value to our customers, uh, we think we have great growth opportunities ahead of us. And now, you guys have really gotten close both to Microsoft and obviously to Amazon. Uh, tremendous edge to be both of them. Uh, what, what has it done for you guys, particularly the tie-up with uh, <laughs> with, with what you guys are doing with Azure, which I think is pretty amazing. Well, I think it's all about scaling uh, what we do uh, geographically and with large customers all over the world. And we both know that the cloud provides significant benefits in terms of uh, enabling your business to be global, enabling you to be closer to your customers. 
The relationship with Microsoft in particular is actually such a synergistic one because we have the world's leading digital experience and marketing solutions. Uh, they have with Power BI and Azure and Dynamics an incredible infrastructure that enables us to leverage it across the world. And what's unique, I think, about the partnership is we also have a joint go-to-market. And so together we're addressing large customer needs together in terms of being able to integrate across each of our solutions. So it's certainly something that's unique, uh, I think, and delivering great value to our customers. When we saw you last, uh, you showed us some fabulous augmented reality uh, uh, tools. And I wanted to know, I mean, are they catching fire? Because to me, I candidly, as someone who really is much more of a 20th century guy than a 21st century guy, I can hope that this could work. But I bet you younger people are seeing how to use it and putting it into play. And it's going to be worth billions of dollars for you guys. We think everybody has a story to tell, Jim. And when you think about what we are doing, all the way from education, K through 12, we've now made a product called Spark available globally to every K through 12 student so that in every education report, they can use multimedia. At the other end of the spectrum, whether you're doing high-end video uh, for the mobile or for the silver screen, whether you're doing augmented reality, immersive media, as we call it, we want Adobe to be the only company that has the end-to-end -end solution. And so I think creativity will continue to be this incredible opportunity for us. And I think, again, what's unique is the fact that tens of millions of people are using our products every month, and hundreds of millions of assets are being created using these applications. If we can harness that power and intelligence and make our applications more accessible to people, more enjoyable to people, that's such a unique opportunity. Uh, one last question. Uh, I know the stock looks down a little bit here, but you've got $8 billion. You added, the same day you bought Magento, you added to your buyback. I guess you guys are ready if the stock comes down. Well, I think, you know, the new tax law certainly helps U.S. businesses. We were able to get a lot of the cash that we had offshore. Uh, we're in rarefied atmosphere in terms of a company that's growing both top line and bottom line at incredible uh, rates. And we continue to be very disciplined users of uh, capital. And so uh, we feel fortunate to be in the position that we are and really focused on the large long-term opportunity that we have, Jim. Well, once again, congratulations on an unbelievable run. I'm glad we've been there all along with you. Shantanu, good to see you, sir. Good to be here, Jim. Okay, that's Shantanu New Ryan. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Adobe ADB. All I can say is you want the stock to come down so you can buy it. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.